Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back with part two of really popular hyped up fragrances that I love. So I like doing these ones so much more. Um, I just, I love to talk about things that I love rather than things that I don't love. Um, but yeah, I've got a ton here, so I'm gonna jump right in. Most of these I do have in my collection in some form. There are some that I don't have. Um, but yeah, there are a lot that I do have. So again, I'm gonna jump right in. Okay, so let's start with a few that I don't have. The first one is uh, Moschino Toy 2 Bubblegum. So that is a fragrance that I absolutely love. It is one of the funnest perfumes Ever. It literally smells like bubblegum. Um, Bath and Body Works just released this like, I don't, some kind of a carnival, I don't know, some, they just released a new line and they had a bubblegum pop in it and all you can get really is the body spray and the shower gel. I did pick up the body spray, it is amazing. Um, somebody commented asking me if I knew of a perfume that smelled like bubble gum because she had picked up that body spray and was obsessed with it and I told her I abs actually do. <laughs> uh, Moschino Toy 2 bubble gum smells exactly like bubble gum. Um, that was a perfume that I don't think I would have ever sought out. Um, another perfume reviewer, Joss Jane, she sent a little decant over to me and oh my gosh, I fell in love immediately. The only reason I don't own a full bottle of it yet is because I don't wanna pay full price for a bottle because it's, the performance is really, really bad. So, um, but the performance is still way, way better than the Bath and Body Works body spray. So um, yeah, at some point I will probably pick up a bottle of it. I. I adore it. It's it's amazing. Another fragrance I never I don't know that I've ever mentioned a Tory Burch fragrance on my channel ever, but there is one Tory Burch fragrance that I have I I can't remember if I went through a mini of it or if I had some kind of a decant. I had some I had it in some form and I did go through the entire, I think I had a decant of it and I did go through the entire decant and I loved it. It was Tori Birch Love Relentlessly. Um, beautiful. It was a beautiful floral and I remember when I used to wear it to work back then, I used to get tons of compliments on it. Um, men loved it, women loved it, everybody loved it. It was just such a crowd pleaser and it was just, it's just this really beautiful, if I'm, and this is go I'm just going by memory. I'm pretty sure it was Love Relentlessly. None of the other ones look familiar to me, so I'm pretty sure that's it. But it was just this really beautiful, sweet, fresh floral, and I loved it. And I'm not a huge fan of like straight up floral perfumes often, but it is such a good one. It's another one. Tory Burch fragrances are quite expensive, so that's another one that I've been kind of waiting to see if I could find a, a bottle secondhand, maybe on Mercari or somewhere before I pay full price for it. If I don't find a bottle maybe within the next, I don't know, six months or so, I will probably just end up paying full price for it, and I will probably do the same thing with Toy 2 Bubblegum. Um, you don't come across those fragrances very often secondhand, so sometimes you just have to bite the bullet and pay full price. Okay, another fragrance that I love, I don't, I have a mini of it, I don't have a full bottle, is Jimmy Choo Fever. Um, it's, it's a popular perfume, I think it's a really good seller. You, you, I have heard it spoken about in the fragrance community before, just not a ton, um, but it is a really popular fragrance and it's one that I just happen to love. Um, it's sweet and caramely and it's kind of gourmand leaning. It's like everything that I love in a fragrance. It's warm, it's cozy. It definitely leans more of, um, more as being like a cold weather fragrance, but I feel like I would end up wearing that fragrance whenever. Um, I just love it. It's kind of in the same, um, it's kind of in the same ballpark as Victor and Ralph Bonbon bon or um, something like that. Prada Candy. It's that kind of a fragrance um, and I really love it. I have, like I said, I do have a mini of it. I don't know why I've never picked up a full bottle, um, but I do really love it. Another fragrance that I really, really love is Gucci Bamboo. 
Now, I have been through a mini of Gucci Bamboo in the past and I absolutely loved it, but I didn't know if it was the EDP or the EDT. So I picked up a full bottle of the EDP formulation secondhand um, and it was not the same. I'm pretty sure that it was the EDT that I had gone through a mini of and that I loved so well. So I need to seek out a bottle of the EDT formulation rather than the EDP. I do love it though. It's super, super popular. It's a really, really good seller. Um, there's nothing groundbreaking about it. Again, it's kind of like a light, sweet, super easy breezy floral, but there's just something about it that's really, really pleasant and it's one of those fragrances that's just like magic on my skin. It just um, meshes with my skin chemistry so well, so it just smells really good on me. Um, so yeah, I need to pick up a bottle of Gucci Bamboo, the EDT formulation. Next is, um, I didn't pull them. I don't know why. I have them, the two that I really like. Uh, Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche and Chanel Chance Eau Tendre. Those are the only two Chanel fragrances that I really, really love. They don't smell, um, they don't smell mature to me. In fact, they're very, very fresh. They're very, um, they're kind of slightly sweet. They're, they're just easy to wear fragrances and I really, really love them. And they have, they are super popular in the normal world and the fragrance community. Um, those two fragrances are incredibly popular and hyped up and I just happen to love them both. I think they're beautiful and I do have them both and I'm not sure why I didn't pull them. I will of course put pictures on the screen for you. Um, okay, <laughs> another, an entire line of fragrances. I don't know if I spoke about this in my last, in my, in the first part of this, I don't think I did, but just the entire line in general that I pretty much like every single one of them. I don't have bottles of them all, but I, I would wear any of them is Ariana Grande perfumes. They are super popular, way, way hyped up. It's like as soon as she releases a perfume, it just, it is like goes to the moon. It's crazy how popular her perfumes are. They're just really nice. Like the, I don't know that I've ever smelled an Ariana Grande perfume that I didn't like. Um, I used to have Thank You Next. It was a really beautiful, kind of very sweet, dense coconut fragrance. Um, I ended up passing that one along because it just didn't smell good on my skin, but I loved how it smelled. I thought it was really, really beautiful. It's funny because people were also getting, people that don't like that fragrance get pickles from it. And I, I didn't quite get pickles from it, but it was like right there teetering on the edge of pickles. It just didn't smell good on me, um, but I really did enjoy it. God is a Woman I think is really, really pretty. I just think that there are better pear and ambrette combination fragrances out there. Um, I have Juliet Has a Gun Pear Ink, which I think is far superior to the Ariana Grande one, even though I do own God is a Woman. Um, I just prefer other pear and ambrette combinations over it. But yeah, I've, I think at one point I've owned every single one of them. Sweet Light Candy, um, Moonlight, um, Ari, which I love Ari. Ari smells so good. They all, they're all super like, you know, crowd pleasing, kind of generic smelling, but they're so pleasant and I love Ariana Grande fragrances. I would be happy to wear any of them, really. I think I talked about this one in my last video, Ely Sob Girl of Now. This one got super, this, oh my gosh, it's just so good. It got super, super hyped up maybe, I don't know, like five years ago. Um, I've only watched Jeremy Fragrance once in my life, like one video ever, and in that video he talked about this fragrance. Um, and yeah, so it's the only fragrance in my collection that Jeremy Fragrance made me buy. And I'm very glad that I, that of all of the videos out there, that's the one I watched because this is an amazing fragrance. Um, it's just so good. It's orange blossom and honey and pistachio. And it's, it's like super syrupy, rich, sweet, decadent smelling, and I adore it. So yeah, that is Ely Soft Girl of Now. Um, another super, super hyped up fragrance, and I have I am guilty of doing a lot of the hype because I love it so much, is Van Cleef and Arpels Orchidea Vanille. 
Um, unfortunately, because this got so incredibly hyped up, they have jacked the price of this up so much. Um, I was able to get mine on Fragrance Nut. It's been probably, again, like four or five years ago probably. Um, I was able to get it on Fragrance Nut for like $57 or something, like a really good price, but now it's gotten so incredibly hyped up that you, it's even on Fragrance Nut, I think there's there it's still like over $100 a bottle. But I love it. It's beautiful. It's a pretty complex vanilla. Um, yeah, it is. It's a very complex vanilla. It's got a ton of notes in it. But I can tell you what I mostly get from this fragrance is, to me, this is mostly chocolate and almond and vanilla and tonka bean. That's what I get most. There are some other notes in it that give it some brightness, like some orange or orange or mandarin, something like that. It's got some rose. I think it's got some violet. So it's got notes that give it some like levity, but it's mostly like vanilla, tonka, chocolate, um, and almond. That's mostly what I get from it. It's stunning. It is one of my favorite perfumes of life. It's one of my favorite vanillas. And this thing is an absolute beast on me. Thankfully, I am one of the people, this thing performs like crazy on me and I love it for that reason. It might be the best performing vanilla fragrance that I've got in my collection. So anyways, that is being Cleef in Our Pels, Orchidea Vigny. Okay, moving right along. The next one. This one, um, I like missed the boat on this one and thankfully you all came and got me and got me on the boat because I, this is a fragrance that had been out for a long time that had been being talked about for a long time but that I slept on. This is Ralph Lauren Beyond Romance and this is another fragrance that's got it's got quite a few notes in it, but I pretty much just get, I get this really beautiful, sweet, juicy raspberry and a creamy note, creaminess, like vanilla and like cream. It's basically like raspberries and cream. And that's how it was described to me, which I was like, yes, please, I have to have it. Oh, it's so good. So yeah, that's a fragrance that has been getting love for a long time and I, for whatever reason, slept on it, And but I adore it. It's so good. It's so good on my skin too and it performs really, really well. Um, I found the entire Romance line is has really, really good performance. So anyways, that is Beyond Romance from Ralph Lauren. Another line of fragrance that um, I love, and I, for whatever reason I don't have any, is the Philosophy Fresh Warm Cream line. They've got like a whole bunch of different ones now. They've got like Fresh Warm Cream Cashmere, Fresh Warm Cream Suede. Fre <laughs> They've just got like, diff like different ones. I love every single one that I've ever smelled. They smell amazing. One of them smells a lot like, um, and it might just be the original Fresh Warm Cream uh, it smells, it's either that one or the cashmere cream that smells a lot like uh, Bath and Body Works Warm Vanilla Sugar, which you guys know I am crazy for. Those are fragrances that I also try never to pay full price for because they just don't, they don't perform well for me. Um, so I keep my eye out for secondhand bottles, but yeah, I don't want to pay too much for it because I will have to reapply it probably every hour or two hours because they just don't last but I absolutely love them. I think they're amazing. I don't know if this has been hyped up but anytime you look at like best sellers this fragrance comes up so I'm thinking it's a really good seller though I haven't heard it get hyped up per se but I adore it and I know it is a good seller. Like I said it comes up in bestseller lists so um, anyways, that is Michael Kors Sexy Amber. This is probably, this is probably my favorite Michael Kors fragrance, hands down. It's amber, but it's sweet. It's a little bit powdery and I just love it. I, I could definitely see people thinking that it smells mature, but it's got enough sweetness in it. I feel like that keeps it from going super mature. I can tell you this is a fragrance that my husband would probably not like. Um, it would probably smell too mature for him, but I adore it. I love it. It's like an amber, but it's like a warm, sweet, light, powdery amber. 
It's so good. I love it. But yeah, I think Michael Kors fragrances in general just sell a lot because, you know, he's such a popular designer. People love the bags and just love his stuff. So I think just, and I think that the perfumes are popular for that reason. I, I do feel like this is the best Michael Kors fragrance that I've smelled so far. So anyways, that is Michael Kors Sexy Amber. I think in the last video I talked about Chloe, just the original Chloe and how much I loved it. But in this video, we're gonna talk about a different line that I love. I love Chloe Nomad. This definitely had its time of being super hyped up. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is like Mirabelle and Oak Moss and it's super warm. It's really, I don't know, it's really feminine smelling, but without smelling like too girly or too flowery. It's a super cozy scent. It's like warm and cozy and I just love it. I have the intense version as well, which I absolutely adore. This original one is so beautiful and yeah, I love it. So that is Chloe Nomad. I pretty much just love all Chloe fragrances though. They're, it's just a line of fragrances that really works for me. Okay, this next one you guys are gonna laugh because some of you have said how much you absolutely hate this perfume. It makes you sick, you can't stand the smell of it. You hated it back in the 90s and you still hate it today. Uh, I actually like it though. Donna Karen Cashmere Mist. So I have, I think it's called Cashmere Mist Essence, which I love. It's beautiful. I like it even better than Cashmere Mist, but I actually like Cashmere Mist. There's something about that kind of powdery floral perfume that's super warm and cozy for me. Um, it's not a fragrance that I would probably want to wear a whole bunch, but there's something about smelling it out of the bottle that I absolutely adore and I do wear, I have a, I think it's a 10 mil travel spray of the Cashmere Mist Essence. I found it at TJ Maxx for like $5 years ago and I am obsessed with that perfume. That is a perfume that as soon as it gets to be like fall, I love to pull that out. I'll only wear it like once a year because it is a little much. like. There is something, I totally understand why people hate it. And don't worry, you can sit, you can like tell me in the comments how much you hate it and it will not hurt my feelings. I completely understand. But there's something about it that is super warm and cozy for me and I just, I love it. Okay, a, I know that in my <laughs> hyped up fragrances that I really don't like, I went kind of hard on Tom Ford because there are a lot of Tom Ford fragrances that I don't like but there are a lot that I really do like, and one of them that I feel like is a pretty hyped up perfume, but that I think is so beautiful, is Tom Ford Mandrino di Amalfi. Um, I love that fragrance. I haven't smelled it for a while, but if I remember correctly, it's this really beautiful, like bright citrus. I think it's got neroli or orange blossom in it, um, but it's this really bright, summery, kind of slightly sweet citrus. Um, I went through, I had a decant of it years ago, probably five years ago, maybe even, probably five or six years ago actually. And I loved it. It was so beautiful. Um, I've never bought a full bottle because again, it is quite pricey and it's just not anything that I've ever felt like I like had to have, but I can tell you I really, really love it. Speaking of Tom Ford, another one that I think is so beautiful, um, I have to be sparing with it. I have a decant from Royalty Scents. It is, um, and I think a subscriber sent it over, Tom Ford Vini Fatale. That's another fragrance that is so beautiful and warm. I love Tobacco Vini. I think it is a beautiful fragrance. Um, there's just a lot, there are a lot of Tom Ford fragrances that I really do love. Okay, <laughs> another, let me see if I can find it here. Another super, this is just like a timeless, classic, super hyped up fragrance. Um, it is a Chanel fragrance, Chanel Allure. This is, I have the Eau de Toilette, but I like either one. I like the Eau de Toilette as well as the Eau de Parfum. I think they're both really, really pretty. My bottle is so old at this point. I've had this for ages. I mean, I couldn't even tell you how long. It still smells good though. There's something really honeyed and warm smelling about this that I absolutely love. I'm about to do a, an is it a dupe video uh, between this and United Colors of Benetton Hot. So 
I had this one just laying around because of that, but yeah, beautiful. I love it. It's a super warm, but it does, it is a mature smelling fragrance. Um, most Chanel fragrances, in my opinion, especially in their, their just kind of normal line, not the kind of higher end lines, but in the just like department store line, I guess you could call it, they, they're all pretty darn mature. And this one is no different, but there's something beautiful about this. It's like honeyed and sweet and it's, it's just really good. So yeah, I love it. I think it's totally worth the hype. I really want to try the, the flanker of this. Is it Allure Sensuelle? I've wanted to try that for years and I've still never gotten my nose on it. So anyways, yeah, that is Chanel Allure. Another one that is, this fragrance has been hyped up like crazy in the perfume community or in the fragrance community, but I feel like for good reason. That is Pure Poison from Dior. So I love Pure Poison, but I will never well, yeah, I do. I love Pure Poison, but I just got a new perfume. You guys have probably seen. I've already talked about it twice on this channel because I am already that obsessed with it from Untamed called My Greek Lover. And it's like... <laughs> it's like My Greek Lover is a Picasso and Pure Poison is like a print of a Picasso that you picked up at like an art shop, you know? It's beautiful for what it is, but now that I've got that My Greek Lover that is just, it's kind of similar to this, but I mean, like on another level, it's hard for me to, to love this as much as I did, but I do still absolutely love it. It's been super hyped up. I love this because it's a clean white floral, but without being like overly sweet, it's super cozy. Oh, and there's just something beautiful about it. There's, yeah, and there's nothing else out there like Pure Poison. I've had a lot of people tell me that this smells like Pure Poison or that smells like Pure Poison. And it's kind of like when people tell me things smell like Stella and to me, it never smells like Stella. That's kind of how I feel about Pure Poison too. Um, usually, I, like I haven't found anything that smells really, really like Pure Poison. Um, but anyways, yeah, I do love it. I think it's absolutely worth the hype. And yeah, that is Pure Poison from Dior. Okay, another perfume. This is another one that it's not necessarily hyped up, but it is still being talked about like to this day. It's such a classic. It's such an amazing perfume. Um, and it, when I was in high school, this was like, I mean, this was like the perfume to wear. Givenchy Amourige or Amourige de Givenchy. Um, Oh my gosh, I love this. This is the most beautiful, like, sweet floral. It takes me straight back to the 90s. It just smells like a 90s floral in a bottle. I love it so much. It's got so much depth. It's got like a million notes in it too. And I'm pretty sure it's got some of those old school notes like carnation and it's got spices. It's got a ton of flowers in it, like every flower but it's just this beautiful, like sweet, warm floral that smells like the 90s. I adore it. It has stood the test of time and it will continue to stand the test of time because it is amazing. So anyways, that is Givenchy Amourige. Another perfume that has stood the test of time that I absolutely love that has been, I mean, people are still talking about this to this day, is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea and for good reason. It's just such a beautiful, classic perfume. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. I started wearing this when I was in junior high school when it very first came out. And I still love it to this day. It used to be an absolute beast of a fragrance. You used to be able to spray this on and you were good. It's not like that anymore, unfortunately. It is very, very... It is very, very watered down in comparison to what it used to be, but I still adore it. This is uh, one of my Project Pan bottles, so we'll see how far I can get through this before the end of the year. 
but I do love this. And again, it has really stood the test of time and it is still being talked about today and I love it. So anyways, that is Elizabeth Arden Green Tea. Another Elizabeth Arden fragrance. I'm desperately looking for a vintage bottle. I think I found a vintage bottle, but I'm nervous to pull the trigger because you just never know how they how it's been stored and I'm always just so nervous, but is Elizabeth Arden Sunflowers. That is another fragrance that I used to wear in junior high school when it very first came out. I loved it. It's this weird kind of like aquatic floral fragrance, but I love it. Yeah, there are a lot of fragrances on the market that kind of smell like sunflowers, but I don't know, that was another fragrance that was absolutely nuclear. <laughs> like, you could spray it on once and you would be good for the entire day. And yeah, I miss it. So I am, I've got my eye on a vintage bottle, but I'm super nervous, we'll see, we'll see. It also comes with, it's a lot actually of four different perfumes, like vintage perfumes. Um, Elizabeth Arden Sunflowers, and there's also a vintage bottle of, of Elizabeth Arden True Love, which I think I'm gonna have to go for it because if both of those turned out to be good, oh my gosh, the original formulation of True Love is amazing too, so I feel like I need them. But anyways, another super, super hyped up, this is a niche perfume, super hyped up niche perfume that I love is Indult Tohoda. So, um, I have a clone from Coco Pink, and I will tell you, I tested them side by side. It depends on which and what kind of weather it is, but, and I can't remember, I did a whole video on it, um, but one of them performs really well in the heat, and one of them performs really well in cooler weather, and then, like, it's the opposite. One is really bad in cold weather, one is really great in cold weather. I can't remember which way it is, but my clone smells like 99% identical to the real thing. So I don't feel like I need to spend $300 on a bottle of Tohoda because I've got a really beautiful clone. But anyways, yeah, super, super hyped up fragrance that I absolutely adore. It's a beautiful vanilla. It's pretty simple. It's got some other notes in it, but it's pretty simple. And at the end of the day, it just smells like this beautiful, warm, kind of bakery vanilla. It's gorgeous. Another perfume that got super, super hyped up. It's been, it's been a few years now, um, but that I really, really love is Byredo Gypsy Water. So I haven't heard anybody talk about Gypsy Water for a while. Um, when it got super, super hyped up some years back, I bought a decant of it. I loved it. It's beautiful. I went through my decant, but I have not ever purchased a full bottle of it because it's incredibly expensive. And um, it didn't, it actually kind of performed like a molecule perfume on me. So yeah, I, I just didn't want to spend that kind of money on a perfume that didn't perform very well. But I really do love how it smells. I think it's beautiful. It's very, um, that perfume for me was like very earthy. There was something that almost, I almost got this like fresh earth note from it, but it was super light and I don't know, it was really beautiful. It was very beautiful on me too, but it's just a little too expensive for what it is. Another Byredo, and I, Byredo I can kind of take it or take them or leave them. Um, I don't love the line, but there are there are some that I really do love, but I will tell you my favorite Byredo fragrance that I've ever small, smelled is Bal d'Afri. It's a really beautiful vetiver fragrance and it's super fresh, it's light, it's not too feminine, it's not too masculine, it's just this really beautiful, light, fresh, clean, um, kind of vetiver fragrance. And yeah, it's definitely my favorite of the, uh, I think so far of the line. Another niche fragrance, I don't wanna say it got like super hyped up, I've just heard a ton of people talk about it on YouTube and I've also seen a ton of people post about it on Instagram, so I guess just in my orbit it got super hyped up, um, is Papillon Bengal Rouge. I love that fragrance. I've got a big decant of it that I'm like savoring and I only wear it like once a year because I, when I get through with my decant, I'm gonna have to buy a bottle of it. And it is expensive, but it's beautiful. It's like this warm, 
spicy, cozy, dense, cold weather fragrance. And it is so beautiful. I don't think that that one would be for everybody because I do get a kind of, I don't want to say a vintage vibe, but I do get a little bit of a vintage vibe from it, um, which is why I love it so, so much. It's just such a beautiful, it's a pretty dense fragrance though, but it's beautiful. Ooh. We have thunderstorms literally every day at this point. Like every single afternoon we have thunderstorms. So it's just, it's going to be part of the videos probably for a while. We're going to have one of those super hot, humid, rainy summers. Another perfume that got super, super hyped up that I actually ended up liking and I was not expecting to like it at all is Parfums de Marly Oriana. Um, so yeah, in my part two of popular and hyped up fragrances that I don't like, um, I talked about the entire line from like pretty much everything from Parfums to Marley. I just think that they're super, super overhyped and way too expensive for what they are. But I will say I really did enjoy Oriana. Um, I thought it was really nice. It was a kind of love, don't be shy, smelling perfume. Um, but there was something about it that I, I don't enjoy love, don't be shy at all but I really, really enjoyed Oriana. There's just something about it that was, I don't know, that I just enjoyed more. Another fragrance, I've got a clone here from Be Laird, but Amouage Sunshine, I absolutely love it. It's, oh my gosh, it's like an Osmanthus and tobacco fragrance. And again, you get this really beautiful kind of honeyed quality to it. It smells syrupy. It's sweet. If you like Osmanthus, I think you would love this perfume. It's a lighter tobacco too. I think it's actually white tobacco rather than like, I guess normal tobacco. And which is, a, it's much lighter than like, so you're not getting this like heavy tobacco fragrance. It's like a sweet light tobacco. It's beautiful. I love it. It's very honeyed smelling to me and I adore it. It got super, super hyped up. It really still does get super hyped up. I think Amouage in general gets super hyped up. Um, this is one that I can get behind though. It smells incredible. I've been through like several decants of the real thing and then Be Laird sent this bottle over to me at some point. You can see I've got a huge dent because I adore it. Yeah, and I love it. And this, the Be Laird version smells like almost identical to the original, so I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. So anyways, yeah, that is Amouage Sunshine, uh, Sunshine or Be Laird Sunshine Vibe. Another niche fragrance that I think is fantastic that has, I think it has been hyped up definitely within the fragrance community is, and I don't know how to say the name of this, is it Ex Nilo? I think it's Ex Nilo. Fleur Narcotique. I would probably have a bottle of that if I didn't own my Orlov, Orlov from Orlov Paris, which smells very, very similar to it. The only thing that the Ex Nilo has that my, that my Orlov doesn't have is that I think it's got like a cocaine note in it and you can smell it for sure in Fleur, Nar in Fleur Narcotique. So yeah, I would love to have a bottle of it just for that. But again, I have a perfume that smells very, very similar to it, minus that narcotic note. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's a stunner of a fragrance. I think it is worth every bit of the hype. Um, and it's really beautiful. If you want like a budget friendly version of Fleur Narcotique or of Orlov, check out Lanvin Marry Me. Um, it is a beautiful perfume that smells very, very much like either of those. Okay, another perfume, and I don't wanna say it got super overhyped, but this is one that I've definitely heard a lot of people talk about in the fragrance community. Um, that is Victoria Minia Hedonist, and this is amazing. This is like, um, this fragrance has peach in it, and I usually do not like peach in perfume at all, but it's like a boozy peach. Oh my gosh, because it's got a ton of rum in it. It's like peach and rum. I think this has got tobacco in it as well, if I remember correctly. Oh, it's beautiful though. It's like this boozy, sweet, syrupy peach. 
Oh, it's gorgeous. So anyways, that is Victoria Minya Hedonist. Another way hyped up. I mean, hyped to the moon and back and forth a million times this fragrance has been hyped up like no other is Tom Ford Lost Cherry, which I love. Um, I have the Dossier version, Oriental Cherry, which smells identical. I mean, it smells identical to Lost Cherry. And this one performs way, way better than Lost Cherry. So I'm super happy to have this version of it. Um, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's like cherry and almond. It's super cozy, warm smelling. You can literally wear it any time of year. It's a grown up smelling cherry too. So it doesn't smell like, it doesn't smell juvenile at all. Oh, it's just, it's so good. And this version of it is really, really good. I don't feel like I'm missing out on the Tom Ford. And I've, I've had a decant of, I think I got it in my royalty sense. Yeah, I think I had it and got it in my royalty sense box. Um, and I tested them side by side and I could not tell the difference. Um, so yeah, I'm perfectly happy with my dossier version of it. Another perfume, I have a clone of it or a dupe of it and not the real, well, no, I do have the real thing as well. I have a 12 mil mini of it. It's Tom Ford Noir de Noir. Boy, did Noir de Noir have its day. Um, it, it got pretty darn hyped up there for a while. It's such a beautiful perfume. Um, I've got the Armoff Club de Nuit Intense, which smells literally identical to it. Um, again, I do have a mini of the real thing. I have tested that I have tested it side by side, which I'll do a whole is it a dupe video um, on this fragrance. I can tell you, spoiler alert, yes it is. It's an absolute dupe. It smells almost identical to it. It's a really beautiful kind of dark, incense-y, syrupy rose. Oh, I love this fragrance so much. This is definitely a wintertime fragrance, so you can't just bust this thing out anytime you want. It's um, like it might suffocate you in the heat. I don't know. I'm kind of tempted to spray this on right now because I haven't worn it in so long. Oh my gosh, and I love it so much. I'm super tempted to spray it on, but I won't. But anyways, yeah, that is um, our Moth Club de Nuit Intense, which is a dupe of Tom Ford Noir de Noir, which got super, super hyped up, but I feel like it's totally worth the hype. It's beautiful and I love it. Another fragrance that is pretty hyped up, and I guess, I don't know that it's super hyped up in the fragrance community, but um, it's a perfume that if you look, if you like go to any, any perfume website and go to bestsellers, it's gonna come up on the bestseller list, is Azara Wanted Girl. This is such a stunner. Um, this is another one that I completely slept on. I do not know why I waited so long. I don't know why I waited so long. And I, somebody sent this to me. I didn't even buy it. Somebody sent it to me. And after I got it, I was like, oh my gosh, what have I been waiting for? Now I want the whole line. I want the Wanted Girl by Night. I want the tonic. Like I want every single one of them because it's so good. This is another like syrupy, sweet, kind of caramel fragrance. Again, kind of in the same vein as Prada Candy or Jimmy Choo Fever. The only difference is this one's a little bit sweeter and this one's got some more noticeable fruits in it. It's beautiful though. It's a really good performing fragrance too and I absolutely adore this. It is worth every bit of the, I guess, bestseller status that it has. So anyways, that is the Zara Wanted Girl. Another one, this is a niche fragrance that I've heard people talk about for years and years. Um, this is Diptyque Philosikos. So this was a subscriber just sent this beauty over to me. This is a stunning green fig fragrance. Like it's a fig fragrance, but it is not sweet at all. It's not even really creamy smelling at all. It's just very... It's very fresh, crisp, and green smelling. It's incredible. It's one of the best fig fragrances I think I've ever smelled. I absolutely adore it, and I think it is worth every bit of the hype. Um, I've heard people talk about this for years. So anyways, that is Diptyque Philosikos. Another one, this is another fragrance that has been 
that has just stood the test of time. I've had a bottle of this in my collection for ever since it came out and I absolutely love it. It's Lolita Limpica. I remember the first bottle that I ever had. Actually, I think I picked up a mini or something of it after it first came out because it was pretty expensive back then. And then I think eventually after I went through that mini, I found a bottle in TJ Maxx and yeah. And then from that point on, it had just been in my collection. This is a beautiful, dark, licorice, really licorice perfume. It's got a bunch of other notes in it. It's got some flowers in it. But at the end of the day, it's just this really beautiful, warm, like licorice fragrance and it's beautiful. But anyways, yeah, it, it, this is one that has really stood the test of time. People still talk about this. It still sells and it's beautiful. So this is the EDP formulation and I absolutely love it. So that is Lolita Lampica. This is another niche perfume that this thing got hyped again to the moon and back. It got hyped up so hard. Um, this is Atelier des Ors. I guess that's how you say it, des Ors. Atelier des Ors Lune Feline. And oh my gosh, this is so good. This is vanilla and cardamom. Really, really strong cardamom. Like so strong, it's warm. Like it smells physically warm when you put it on. It's a very, very like potent. It's an absolute beast. I would say it's more of a cardamom fragrance than it is a vanilla. Um, people always talk about this as a vanilla fragrance and it is because the vanilla gives it a sweetness and kind of smooths the cardamom out some, but at the end of the day, this is a cardamom fragrance for sure. But yeah, this got hyped up like crazy. Um, another reviewer found it on fragrance by, I think, .ca and she, Message me immediately and so I ran I ran and bought it because it was like hundred and forty dollars. It was a really really good price So anyways, yeah, that is Atelier des Ors Lune Feline beautiful cardamom fragrance uh, Another this is another fragrance. I want to say this has been hyped up But then I think that I'm guilty of probably like 75% of the hype on this one because I love it so much That is YSL manifesto. I love this perfume. This is another Oh my gosh. This is another like vanilla and tonka bean perfume. Again, it's got some flowers in the middle, but I don't even get flowers at all. I mostly just get, I mostly just get a warm vanilla and tonka bean. It's beautiful. I adore it. So yeah, that that's another one that has absolutely stood the test of time and um, I think will continue to stand the test of time. It's beautiful though. Sadly, this one's been discontinued. It's getting more and more difficult to find. Um, so anyways, that is why I sell Manifesto. Okay, another, uh, a couple more niche fragrances that got super hyped up. And it's funny because this first one I'm gonna talk about, I did not like it at first. And now I own a bottle of it because it is stunning. I revisited my sample card that I had of it and I fell in love and then I immediately had to buy a full bottle. That is Gallagher Fragrances Rosé All Day. Um, oh my gosh, this is so good. So this is Apple Crisp Plum Dark Rose Brown Sugar Tonka Bean and Stainless Steel. And I guess it was because that stainless steel note, um, like I, it was really, really detectable the first time I tested this. But then when I revisited it last winter, I wasn't getting the tonka bean at all. I was getting this beautiful rose and plum and brown sugar combination. And it's beautiful. This one has been hyped up like seriously in the fragrance community, but for good reason, it's beautiful. And then the other one that has been super hyped up is Wicked Good from Gallagher. And this is another one. I absolutely adore this perfume. This is, all it is is chocolate, Madagascar, vanilla, and tonka bean. It used to be really, really expensive, but they have lowered the price on it some, so I'm thinking the vanilla is maybe not as expensive as it had been before. But yeah, I think I picked mine up on sale and I was able to pick it up, I think for like $115 or, I don't know. Actually, I think I got my rose all day for like 80 something dollars. I might've gotten my Wicked Good for that too. 
But anyways, it's amazing. It is worth every single bit of the hype. This is the best chocolate fragrance on the market, hands down, in my humble opinion. I adore it. Another fragrance that gets super, well, I haven't heard it, I haven't heard it talked about super recently, but um, it used to get hyped up like crazy, is Guerlain Terracotta. Um, I love this fragrance so much. This is the most beautiful beachy white floral, but it's mostly the florals and it's mostly gardenia. I love it. It's beautiful. My only problem with this one, I love it also because it's got, it leans a little bit vintage smelling to me. It reminds me of those beautiful beachy white florals from the 80s and I adore it. It's probably my favorite beachy white floral in my collection. The only problem I have with this one is the performance is trash. I can get maybe 20 minutes out of this perfume before it completely wears off and I can't even smell it anymore, which makes it incredibly frustrating to wear. I end up applying it like literally once an hour, which is why I have such a huge dent in it because I have to apply it so, so much. I don't think I even wore this one single time last year because I was I just get frustrated with it. Um, yeah, I'll revisit it this year though and I'll let you guys know how that one does. So that is Guerlain Terracotta, such a stunner of a perfume though. Okay, another perfume that has been super hyped up for so many years now, I don't own it but I do love it, is Creed Virgin Island Water. So it's so funny because somebody, it was somebody that lived in the Caribbean and she just got so annoyed. She like left this comment this has been years ago when I was talking about Virgin Island Water at one point. Left a comment talking about how coconut and lime doesn't go together. That's disgusting. We would never do that in the Caribbean. Why? I don't understand why people even like the smell of that. I'm like, I mean, I don't know. All I know is I just like how it smells. It smells amazing. It's coconut and lime and like it's really light and watery smelling and fresh and like everything you want to smell like in the summertime. Um, the closest thing I have is my Dua like clone that is Becker Rouge 540 and Creed Virgin Island Water mixed. Um, it's the closest thing I have to Virgin Island Water, but I love Virgin Island Water. I think it is incredible. I think it is worth every bit of the hype and I adore it. Another, this one got so hyped up when it was released, but I love it. Um, I don't know that it's worth as much hype as it got, but... I still adore it nonetheless. Juliet has a gun, Vanilla Vibes. Um, I love this perfume. It is vanilla, but its I think it's got coconut in it too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's like vanilla and coconut. It's super warm, creamy. I love it so much. Again, I don't, I don't know that it's worth as much hype as it got, but whether it is or isn't, I still really, really enjoy this one. So anyways, that is Juliet Has a Gun Vanilla Vibes. Okay, another couple fragrances that are really, really popular that I love are number one, Gucci Bloom. Um, I haven't smelled the entire line. I would love to get my nose on the entire line, but I just in general, I love Gucci Bloom and I love Gucci Flora. Um, I have loved this perfume for years and years. I've got a pen spray of the EDT formulation. I picked up this bottle of the EDP formulation after I heard it had been discontinued. And I love it. It's a beautiful, sweet, feminine, light floral. It's stunning. So anyways, yeah, I love Gucci Flora and I love Gucci Bloom. I think that they're just, they're, there's nothing groundbreaking about them. There's nothing special about them but there's something so pleasant about both of them that I just think is beautiful. So yeah, that is Gucci Flora. Um, let me, oh, okay. Another way hyped up fragrance, this one got super, super hyped up years ago. It's been years at this point, is this one here, Zara. Um, this is the Rich Warm Addictive from the Tobacco Collection. This is the original formulation. I've heard that the newer formulation is not good. 
or is not as good and doesn't even smell like this anymore. This is incredible. I love this. This is tobacco and honey and coconut. It's sweet. It's warm. I love it. My husband and I both love this perfume. That's why it's almost half gone because we both use it and we both love it. So anyways, that is Rich Warm Addictive from Zara. Another niche fragrance that got super, super hyped up that I think is worth the hype, I think it is the most stunning tuberose fragrance, is Nazamato Narcotic V. So this is another one that's got hyped up. It's been years ago at this point. Um, it got hyped up in the fragrance community. This is a beautiful, sweet, like bubblegummy tuberose. I love it. It's pretty much the only tuberose fragrance that I've got left in my collection because I don't know of another tuberose that I like more. Um, I have other fragrances that have tuberose in them that are beautiful, but this is straight tuberose, a tuberose fragrance. Um, you don't smell anything else but tuberose. This is the only fragrance like this left that I've got because it's the only one I need. It is incredible. So anyways, that is Nas Nazamato Narcotic V. These fragrances got so hyped up. These are celebrity fragrances. I've had both of them at one point, but this is the one that I kept. This is Madonna Truth or Dare Naked. This is so good. This is like, a, I would say this is kind of like a gourmand amber fragrance. This has got like almond in it. It's a little bit powdery. It's got tonka. They both got very, very difficult to find for a while there. Um, the one in the white bottle is again a tuberose fragrance that I felt like, and I just actually didn't like it at all. Um, this one though, I absolutely love. I think it's worth every bit of the hype. It's super warm. If you like a kind of warm, powdery tonka fragrance, I think you would really like this. Um, I think it's really beautiful. So that is Madonna Truth or Dare Naked. Another, let's see, I've got, I've only got two more. This has been a super long video. This next one, this is another celebrity fragrance that has been way, way hyped up, hyped up to the point where it's kind of difficult to find now. And that is Britney Spears Private Show. So I've got two bottles of this. I'm gonna hang on to this big, beautiful tester that somebody sent over and I'm gonna end up passing along my, my bottle. But this is beautiful. This is like a, oh my gosh. It's like a sweet, creamy, coffee, vanilla, caramel kind of fragrance. It's incredible. The tester is an amazing performer, way better than the original, or than, than a non-tester, I should say. I just love this fragrance. It's been hyped up like crazy, but for good reason. It's amazing. So anyways, that is Britney Spears' private show. And then last but not least, this is a Zara fragrance. This thing got so hyped up. It still gets hyped up. It still gets talked about to the point where people still want to get their hands on it and they can't, which is super sad. Um, Zara, a sweet pastry in Paris. So this is beautiful. This is a lemon fragrance, but it's like sweet lemon custard in like a graham cracker crust. That's exactly what it smells like. It's like sweet lemon custard in a graham cracker crust. You can smell the crust, you can smell like the pastry aspect of it and this like sweet, dense lemon. Oh, I love it so much. It's one that I definitely feel like is worth the hype. Um, it wasn't my favorite in the line. I thought, I feel like a mochi atelier in Tokyo is better than a sweet pastry in Paris, but this one got all of the love. <laughs> this is the one that everybody wants. So anyways, that is the sweet pastry in Paris from Zara. And that is going to be it guys. Those are a lot of fragrances that have been super, super hyped up or are very popular that I happen to really, really love. I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs>